Hello and welcome to The Classical Now. I'm Will Fraser and tonight I'm joined by the pianist and composer Heather Schmidt. Heather, it's lovely to have you on the show. Hello, thank you for having me. You came to composition quite early in life, didn't you? Yes. I, uh, actually, I started piano lessons at the age of four and I was very fortunate to have a music teacher who encouraged all of her students to write music. So by the end of my first year of piano lessons, I was actively composing. Do many composers who are around today uh, perform as well as compose? No, actually nowadays it's very interesting. It's very unusual, I think, uh, for performers and composers to be one in the same person. In the past, of course, all of the great composers were also performers, uh, Mozart, Liszt, Rachmaninoff, you know, to name a few. And uh, eventually, somehow in the 20th century, it just got very segregated when there's a group of composers and a group of pianists or performers of other instruments. And uh, I think it'd be really nice to sort of see the two intermix again, because I find very much that doing the two things uh, sort of strengthens both areas. For instance, when I'm playing standard repertoire by you know, one of the composers of the past, I feel like I have an interesting insight and unique perspective because I can look at it from the viewpoint of a composer. So you can see what they're doing. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think I see and notice things that maybe wouldn't jump out to the performer who doesn't also compose. And, and likewise, I find that being a performer very much affects the kind of music that I write. How would you describe the kind of music that you write? Uh, the music I write is very, very expressive. Uh, it's definitely contemporary language, but it's at the same time, I think, very accessible. Um, you know, it's not something that I've specifically aimed to make you know, easy listening in that sense. I mean, it's got a lot in it. It's, uh, the, you know, it's music that the more you listen to, the more you get. But upon a first listening, uh, audiences always tell me that they can already grab a lot and they get a lot of visual imagery. Um, my music is very dramatic and colorful at times and then there's also a very intimate and delicate side so it, it really has a wide range of expression in it. One of your pieces is called Solus and it's about being alone. Are you a solitary person? Uh, somewhat. I'm not a uh, not a total loner. I'm uh, married now. <laughs> so I at least have a partner. Um, Is he a loner too? Or? Well, we're both semi-loners, I guess. So you kind of have opposite compatible. ends of the house or whatever. Yeah, not quite like that. But, we, but we're, both, uh, I mean, we're both people that just enjoy having time to ourselves, especially when we're working. Um, but he's, he's, he's a great, great husband and uh, it's really nice to be able to share my life with someone. And I've got a really nice group of friends. So I wouldn't say I'm, uh, I mean, I enjoy spending time alone, but I also very much enjoy being around other people. And, um, you know, as a performer, I love sharing what I you know, write and what I perform with, with an audience and with, with people. I, I'm not one of those composers that likes to hide in a closet and sort of send out the piece under the door. Um, I really like being involved in the live performances and interacting with the audiences and in other cases when there's other musicians performing my music, I want to be involved in all the rehearsals and, and performance. You've said that your music um, can be quite accessible. Do you think it's possible to write music today that is accessible, that is also serious? Yes, I do, definitely. And I, I would consider my music to be in that category. Uh, it's not music that, it, it stems out of the tradition of the past composers, but it's definitely very original, it's definitely contemporary in its harmonies and in its melody. You know, I may look back to different structures or different types of forms of pieces, but even those I sort of do in my own individual way and always try to make each thing my own. So it's, uh, I think the reason that my music is accessible to audiences is because even though it's within the contemporary modern language, the soul of the piece is really the feeling and the emotion behind it. And there's, you know, colors and feelings that an audience can immediately grab onto, I think.
Are there other types of uh, music that you'd be interested in composing, maybe in other mediums or media? Well, I'm very interested in writing music for film. I think that because of the dramatic and emotional nature of my music, I think it would be well suited to writing for film. It's something that I um, have just been starting to get into. And, and have you done any of it yet? I, I've done some clips for, for a small company in Dallas, and I've got a couple projects that are hopefully going to work out in which I would be bigger scale. Uh, things for me to work on and I just think that the emotional nature and the drama of my music and the imagination and color that goes into it would be very well suited to film and I think that I could also add sort of an original style of music it wouldn't be just film music in the style of you know the traditional Hollywood composers I mean it, it could be if it you know, needed to be but I would prefer you know to sort of keep my individual stamp which I think would fit well within the film genre. Do you think that there might be a danger that if your music is too emotion and emotional and too rhythmic that it might actually overpower the film? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, if I was writing for film, I would definitely keep in mind you know, the context of that, and it probably would be a little bit different than when I'm writing something. Um, and, and, and in many cases, I don't think it's necessary that something would be too strong or too powerful or too... I mean, it's, music is very much an intricate part of the film, and I think as long as it's placed in the right way and in the right context, it, it could be very effective.
You're performing a piece called Sprint on the show tonight. Why exactly is it called Sprint? Well, the, the, the Sprint connection is, is twofold. First of all, it's a very fast, virtuosic piece. And so Sprint seemed an appropriate title for that reason alone. And secondly, my husband and I spent a lot of time talking on cell phones because I travel a lot. And at the time I wrote the piece, we both had Sprint cell phones. And the model of phone that we had, when you opened up the phone, it would play CCCG, which is sort of the sprint motive of my piece. So you'll hear it at the very beginning of the piece and throughout the work. And it comes back the, in all yeah, different Yeah, sort of the voices. thematic basis of the piece.
Well, Heather, thank you very much for joining me on the show. It's been lovely to have you here. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Will Fraser, and remember, the future of classical music is now. Good night.